All right. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining us today. Um, today, we are going to be covering some of the new to you products, potentially, uh, depending on whether you're using Smart List Builder or Smart Connect today. So we're going to talk about some of that functionality. Uh, we're going to be talking about what E1 has put a ton of effort into, some new functionality. Many of, many of you on the call will have access to soon. And then also some training or how to gain access to some of these trainings on this new functionality. I'm gonna start with a fact. And the fact is that employees are wasting their time. So on average, employees are spending 32 days a year looking for the data they need to do their jobs. So companies no longer use one single platform, right? Companies just aren't using GP. Instead, they're also using whatever app they're finding online that can help them do their job more efficiently, right? And so that is exactly why E1 has been doubling down on our efforts to build the best solutions for our existing customers and a way they can then bring those solutions with them to their next ERP, whether that's today or 10 years from now. So we are making sure that you are future-proofed and getting access to the data you need to do your jobs. But not only that, continuing to invest in our, in our current people as well that don't have any plans on moving off of their current ERP. So we're still investing in, in the wide variety of different people we have at different stages in their ERP adventures. I want to talk about the E1 iPass platform. So the E1 iPass platform is a platform that allows you to integrate, migrate, and report on your data to cover all of your business requirements. So I want to break these down even further and talk about each one of these pillars and where these fit into your future subscriptions with E1. I'm going to start with Smart Connect, um, our traditional data integration tool. Many of you are familiar with this. So what Smart Connect in a, gen in, in a nutshell is going to do is it's going to allow you to move data from point A to point B. So many of you on this call have historically used our on-premise version of the tool because you're using it for Dynamics GP or maybe even Dynamics Nav. We continue to heavily invest in our on-premise version. In fact, our code bases between smartconnect.com and our on-premise versions are merged, which means any new features that go into our .com version also get rolled into our on-premise version. So we're continuing to invest in the, in the on-premise version of the tool, as well as develop our hosted version of Smart Connect. And what this is going to do is it's going to allow you to move to a cloud-hosted ERP and then use our cloud-hosted version to connect to those different cloud apps. So what I want to do is show you a little bit of smartconnect.com because I know most of the people on this call have probably used Smart Connect 21 on-premise. And so today's, the point of today's call was to show you more of the newer features that we have out there. So this is smartconnect.com. As you'll notice, this is a web-based interface. So all I needed to do is log in with the username and password. There's no install with it. So like you would in Smart Connect on-premise. We'll start out with our dashboard, having any sort of our latest news in there, login history, as well as the last run integrations. With Smart Connect on-premise, you'll notice that in the Smart Connect 21 version on-prem, it is tabular just like it is inside of smartconnect.com. The first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to set up our connections, right? A connection would be something that you're going to set up an integration to. So a system, think of it, think of it as a system that you're logging into. So when you set up the connection, you can use it as a data source or a destination and create as many integrations and have as many users in there as you'd like. So once you have that connection set up, we're then gonna say, how do we wanna set up the integrations between those different connections? 
So in the smartconnect.com interface, you'll notice it's very nice. Um, and it has a lot of different options here to be able to color code and that sort of thing to be able to identify those processes or integrations more easily. I'm gonna go ahead and open up an integration that I already have built between Concur and Business Central. You'll notice when we first open the integration, this looks a lot like Smart Connect 21 on-premise as well, that basically we're gonna give this integration an ID, right? What do we wanna call this integration? The next thing we're gonna do is select our source. Where is our data coming from? The one thing I wanna point out about this is as well is that no matter what systems we are connecting to, this interface is always going to be the same, right? So this is, if you're a partner listening, this is a really great way to train your staff on one solution and be able to say yes to all those different systems that your customers are wanting you to integrate. If you're a customer, this is a really great way to build your own integrations, right? So today you might start with Business Central and CRM, but somebody comes to you and says, actually, I want to integrate Shopify and HubSpot and WooCommerce. Well, the nice part about is you're going to be able to go in and modify and or know the interface and just change the sources and the targets, right? So the interface is always going to look the same for you. It's just where you're pushing and pulling the data from is what's going to change for you. So you're not going to have to learn a new platform every time you want a new integration or write any code for that matter. So we're starting with our source. Where is our data coming from? Next, we're saying, where do we want the data to go? So this is our target or our destination. So we're defining where we want that target to be. Next, we're easily creating this integration between point A and point B. As you'll notice in smartconnect.com, it is slightly different than the Smart Connect on-premise version in that the sources are on our right-hand side. The target or destination is on the left-hand side. So this is flip-flop from our on-premise version. The other thing you'll notice is that we have a pick list essentially to create the integrations from point A to point B. In Smart Connect on-premise, it is a drag and drop from the left-hand side to the right-hand side is one of the options. So, in smartconnect.com, once again, we're saying where in our source, where are we getting the data from, and then where do we want to push this data to? Okay, and once again, to integrate those two different places, we just select where we want that data to integrate from and push it to. If you're not seeing the source column or Maybe you wanna do something additional with that column, such as adding a local constant or maybe grabbing that next invoice number um, or adding a restriction, that sort of thing. You can go ahead and add in additional columns in here as well. And then those will show up underneath your source to be able to integrate. Once again, we also made this easy for the more technical people or the developers on the call that we still give you the option if some of the out of the box stuff isn't there for you. Inside of smartconnect.com, we give you some of the functionalities to be able to drag and drop on, or if you wanna write some JavaScript, you can do that as well inside of smartconnect.com. A couple other things inside of here that will be familiar if you're using Smart Connect on premise is that we have the ability to add in additional um, tasks as well. You'll see a lot of them that you see in the on premise version. We can do things like running things pre-document, pre post-document, or at the document level as well. So running an additional integration, running a SQL command, sending an email for those, those integrations that are run on a schedule, right? We wanna be alerted when those fail. So sending an email task is a big one. Or we've also added the functionality for those people that are using more of the modern systems sending messages to, see, to Teams or Slack or Trello um, for notifications when those integrations have ran. I wanna to briefly touch on the error processing because I think that E1 does this really, really well in that when we receive errors inside of Smart Connect, we give you a 
very nice interface to be able to say, hey, what was that error that happened? And then give you the spot right inside of here to be able to fix that error and then rerun that integration. I do want to touch on, touch on just a couple more things inside of smartconnect.com. You'll notice that we are able to schedule out integrations as well. So we can take any integration that we've created and add a schedule onto it. So we can run that daily, every five minutes, once a year, once a month, et cetera. So you can choose how often you want those integrations to happen. The last thing that I wanna point out because I think this is really beneficial is that with all of those different systems that your customers are coming to you with, is that we have a generic REST service. So if we don't have that connector out of the box for you, we at least give you the platform to be able to connect to any well-built REST API without having to write code. So I'll just show you what this looks like. Um, basically in the generic REST connector, we define what the service is that we're trying to connect to. And then we get to say, where do we wanna get all that data from out of that? that website and where do we want to push that data to inside of the website. So once again, we're still giving you this beautiful interface without writing code if, if we don't have that connector available to you. All right, so that was a very high level smartconnect.com demo. Let me go back into our slideshow here. The next part I wanna to touch on is reporting. So on the last couple of pillars inside of the E1I Pass platform. So many of you on our tool called Smart List Builder, as heavily investing in our tools, this is one that we put a lot of effort into. So we wanted to make sure that you could report on your GP data today, but also report on those many different systems we all use at the same time. So last, one of our biggest complaints that we received from our GP customers was that when they moved to a cloud-hosted ERP, they couldn't take SmartList Builder with them. So what we did, what we did was we built the next version of SmartList Builder that allows you to not only migrate that historical data with you, it'll help you report across those multiple systems. And then we can take that a step further and we can view that data in any system your team wants to work in. So what that's gonna do is allow your users to stay in the system that they wanna work in and not leave that logging into multiple different systems to get that data. Once again, wasting that time, adding to those days a year, they're looking for, those, for that data. So what I wanna do is I wanna show you what the evolution of SmartList Builder looks like. The evolution of SmartList Builder we call PopDoc. So I'm gonna go in and show you what PopDoc looks like. As you'll notice, this is once again, a web-based interface. I just needed a login and a password to be able to, or a username and password to be able to log into this. So I didn't need to VPN into any system to be able to get access to that data. You'll see that we have with this modern interface that we can take any list that we've built and create that into more of a graphical interface as well. So we could create a chart or a graph of any sort inside of here as well, and then display that, display your most important data to your end user on their dashboard. So first and foremost, it's bringing that data to the forefront without them having to look for it. You'll notice across the top here as well, that once again, we're connecting to data, not only in GP, we're connecting to multiple different sources. So for example, we have Dynamics GP. We're connecting to data in Zendesk. We're connecting to data in Azure Data Lake. We're connecting to data inside of Dynamics 365 Business Central, inside of Salesforce, inside of NetSuite, inside of CE. So you can see anything with that REST-based API or SQL, we're gonna be able to grab data out of 
using PopDoc. So let's go ahead and jump into what this looks like. Now, coming from a smart list builder perspective, you can see that we're gonna still see our data in a list format, right? We combine this, our smart list builder functionality with our smart view functionality, also a GP product that essentially made it like smart list on steroids, right? So it was incredibly fast. And we took that even a step further, combined the two functionalities of Smart List Builder and Smart View, and then gave you PopDoc. So you have all the functionality of those as well. For example, being able to see these lists, being able to move your columns around how you like drag and drop. We can group or subgroup with totals right to our screen as well without needing to export to Excel. We can also add on different columns that we have access to with a couple clicks. We can then also filter out the data how many ever times we want, right? If you remember inside a smart list, you only get access to four of those filters. So we can filter out this data however we want. And then we can also share these lists easily across users. So that means that your team isn't coming to your IT department every time saying, hey, can you add this column to this list? Can you create this specific list for me with this restriction? You don't need to have your IT team maintaining lists. Instead, give that functionality to your end users so that way your IT team can function on or can focus on their, their responsibilities as an IT person. So one of the other things I want to mention inside of this screen before I move on to show you kind of how some of these lists are built is you'll notice that we also added some newer functionality as well. These, the color coding here and the variation. So these are what we call matrix reporting. What this allows us to do is report on variations between things. So for example, year over year results, month over month results, Maybe we are have an item quantity shortage somewhere, or maybe it's taking somebody X amount of time to pay their bill and we want to flag them when they hit 10 days, for example. So we're giving you the ability to create those lists to show those variations right at your fingertips. So those are called matrix reportings. All right. So this is the PopDoc interface that your end user would see. I'm gonna go in and show you how briefly how some of these things are built. The first thing that we're gonna do is go into our connectors page. So when we go ahead and add a connector inside a PopDoc that we wanna grab data out of, you can see that we have over 50 out of the box pre-built connectors for you already. Plus, we also have a generic SQL connector. So anything sitting in a SQL, you're going to be able to use PopDoc for as well. The other thing is you'll notice, like Smart Connect and SmartConnect.com, we give you a generic REST service as well. So even if you aren't seeing one of the system that you want to connect to out of one of the 50 out-of-the-box connectors, we're going to give you a really nice no-code interface once again to be able to, to, be able to connect to that well-built REST API. All right, I wanna open up a Dynamics GP connector for us to be able to take a look at. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. You'll notice that when I open up this connector with some of our connectors, we've already pre-built some lists that we know a lot of those users are going to want access to, such as account summaries, accounts, et cetera, et cetera. We have over probably 50 plus, 100, depending on the connector, uh, pre-built list for you in some of these different connectors, depending on which ones you choose. We also give you the ability to add in some of that smart list builder functionality as well. So maybe we want to do comparisons. Um, we, we talk about this more even on when we're migrating from system to system, right? Maybe we want to compare GP data to business central data, for example. We can join this. Maybe we want to join Aaron Fitz 
account from GP inside of Business Central, right? Some joining some of that data in the back end. Those matrix reports I just talked about, merging lists, adding restrictions into lists as well, or also summarizing data. So we give you a lot of that smart list builder functionality, but once again, if you decide to move off of Dynamics GP sometime in the future, you're going to have that smart list builder functionality with you no matter what system you're connecting to. And that's what I'm showing you here. I wanna show you how easy it is to add in some of your lists that you've already built with smart list builder. So inside, a pop doc here. I'll go back and click on it again so you can see I just went into this add list button. We have the ability to add in the list that you've built with Smart List Builder. Okay, so we can bring over some of those lists and display those right within that web interface. If you're using a Smart Connect on this call and you don't have Smart List Builder and you're using Smart List Designer inside a GP, we also give the, you the option to bring, bring in those lists that you've built as well. Last, the other thing that we can do is we can grab SQL table or SQL views as well. This includes any of those extender tables as well that you might have created created um, tables with. So we can bring in any of those SQL tables as tables or views, excuse me, as well. I want to touch on just a couple more things inside of this screen that I'm on before I move to the next thing. Um, I just want to mention that we can also connect to multiple companies, right? So that that is a functionality that's been there since Smart List Builder time. So we have the ability to create and connect to multiple companies, merge the data, data between those companies and report on that as well. In some cases, we also have the ability to add in actions, and I'll show you an example of this a little bit later. But an action is depending on the source, I like to think of it kind of as like what we used to use in GP as drill downs. Um, so being able to do something else. So we've expanded on that and essentially said, if I click on this link, it's gonna bring me here. If I click on this field, I can maybe add a comment into this field, for example, or maybe I can right click and fire off a smart connect integration from within a pop doc list, for example. So we give you the ability to do additional things or take action on the data that you're seeing as well. All right, so this is really cool, but I'm gonna show you how it gets even more neat. So one of the things that we can do is once these lists are built, we can say, where does this person doing their jobs want to see this data? Maybe they don't want to log into all those different systems to see their data. Maybe they just want to come into this pop doc interface, see those lists. But what happens if they don't even have to leave the area or their system that they're working in? This is where we created widgets. So what a widget is, is it essentially allows us to take that list that we built and embed it inside of any system that accepts an iframe. So let me go and show you what this would look at, look like. So I'm sitting inside of Dynamics 365 Business Central, for example. I have PopDoc embedded inside of Business Central. And what I'm showing you is Dynamics GP customers sitting inside of here. So we can see that we have Aaron Fitz inside of here. So once again, this is huge for when you're migrating your history, right? If you're moving to another ERP, maybe this is Intact, maybe this is Acumatica, maybe this is NetSuite that you're moving to. You're gonna be able to bring that history with you and still be able to report on that data without having to migrate all of that historical stuff. So you're gonna have that same functionality that I just showed you in the PopDoc interface as well, right? Being able to move these columns around, being able to group by different data, adding those different filters in once again, and then sharing this with other team members, okay? So you're having this functionality embedded inside of the system that your users wanna work in. 
I'm going to show you another example of the same concept inside of Salesforce. So now I'm completely out of an ERP system, but let's say me as a salesperson, I just want to see if an invoice has been paid. I don't want to use Smart Connect to integrate the data because I don't want this data living in that system. Instead, I want to virtually integrate that data so that way I just have a live refreshable view of what's happening inside of another system, right? So in this case, I have Business Central invoices embedded inside of my Salesforce account. So me as a salesperson, I can say, great, this company is, or this invoice has been paid. I can close out this sale or whatever I need to do with it. This is an example of Zendesk tickets being embedded inside of Salesforce. So this is a help desk ticketing system, for example. So now I can say, you know, this company called and says, hey, I'm running into an issue. Me as a salesperson or somebody answering the phone call can say, let me go ahead and look without actually having to go into Zendesk or asking my support team what's going on. I can view their tickets right within the system I'm working in. So let me show you an example of what an action might look like as well that we talked about previously. So we can see in here, I have added actions on here. I am able to add a ticket comment, right? Maybe I wanna add a ticket comment saying, call now. They're not happy, they won't stop calling in. So I can have that, can create that ticket or add that comment on, and then my support team's gonna be able to see that. Maybe I wanna update the priority from a low status to an urgent status, for example. So once again, Depending on the system that we're grabbing the data from, we can add on different actions to, to, those, to those data sets as well. Um, and then once again, just briefly, you know, grabbing Shopify data, HubSpot data, this can be any data that we've built the list with inside of PopDoc. So that is a high level of what we can do inside a pop doc as you can see it is incredibly fun we've invested a lot of time and effort to make sure that you can use this today while you're using your on-premise or on-premise um, smart list builder or on-premise system for example um, but also you're going to have it to use with any other system so in summary pop doc allows you to view your current gp data it allows you to view data from multiple sources, right? Not just your GP data. We can then take that set of data and embed it in the system your users wanna work in, right? And then we can also use it to migrate that history if you plan on moving off your current on-premise system as well. Now, this is really cool. We are actually giving all current SmartList Builder users access to this PopDoc functionality starting the 1st of July. So as incredibly fun, all of our current SmartList Builder customers get access to PopDoc the 1st of July. So let's talk about next steps. If you want access to any of this newer functionality to SmartConnect.com or to PopDoc, and you need help getting that set up, you will need to be on a subscription and your Dynamics reseller can help you do that. Also, they can help you get access to PopDoc. So contact them or contact us at E1 and we can work with your Dynamics reseller as well to help facilitate you getting their, your PopDoc account set up. Another thing, this was only a 30 minute webinar, so I didn't have time to go really in depth with all the intricacies of PopDoc and SmartConnect.com. If you are interested in learning more in depth about PopDoc and SmartConnect.com, we have a lot of webinars and demos coming up in the coming months. So please look for those, sign up at e1solutions.com under underneath our demos and events page. Or if you don't wanna wait for the next webinar, we also have a lot of YouTube videos that are available out there for us. The last thing I wanna talk about is getting trained on these products. So once you have access to them, I highly suggest attending a PopDoc or smartconnect.com bootcamp training. So feel free to sign up with one of those. Those are also on our website to access those. The other thing I wanna talk about is that 
when you sign up for your PopDoc account, you automatically get sent a login for free PopDoc self-paced training. So if you see an email come through from E1 University, don't ignore it. Click on the link to set up that self-paced training for PopDoc. So that'll get you through the basics of PopDoc. And then you can always attend a boot camp training if you want to learn more in depth how to use the tool. And the same thing with Smart Connect, you also have access to free Smart Connect intro training. You don't automatically get the email in that case, but we still have those available to you on our events page as well. So last, I just wanna thank you um, and appreciate you as the partners and the customers for being loyal customers and partners to us. We are incredibly excited to have spent a lot of effort making sure that you can continue to use our tools the way that they are and also bring them with you in the future. So if you're interested in learning more, contact sales at e1solutions.com or your Dynamics reseller. Cheers.